which, which ships do you think are going to become the most popular as the Sandman fandom expands? Well, Ooh, I mean... Uh, most popular. Well, you know what's really funny? When I watched my episode, mm -hmm. my boyfriend was like, ooh, you guys are really cozy. And I was like, ew, he's my brother. <laughs> That's funny because my partner said the exact same thing about me and Tom. Really? Yes. There's a scene where, where Tom grabs my hair and it's very kinky. And, <laughs> and she literally was like watching it and was just going, kiss, 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 <laughs> like right next to me. And I was like, you can't, that's my brother. You can't do this. But the funny thing is that Alan was telling me stories about how Tom just has sexual chemistry with everyone. I mean, how could you not when you're Tom Sturridge? But like between Gwendolyn, between me, every single person on this show, I think is someone who may so or may not have slept with Dream. And everyone is going to be shipped with Dream. So I Dream, think Dream and shipped everyone. shipped with the entire cast yeah. is really what this is going to end Dream up. Dream is the cast bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> around everyone. I thought I was special. And I thought we that's, had a connection, but okay. it's fine. Uh, it's okay. It's, you know. Okay. We, have we have a connection. Maybe they'll ship us. Maybe oh, wait, we're siblings too. We are. I know, it's all gross. gross. Never mind. Next. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is from at Lot Matthew. Hello, Kirby. How Baptiste? I would love to know how was your process of acting as death? What songs did you hear or other media, not counting the graphic novel, helped you understand the character? And I'm so excited for the series. <laughs> I'm very excited, I'm excited for you to see it. You don't have long to wait. Um, so I have a playlist actually on my phone and it's called Emotions. And mm. it is a playlist of very sad songs. Um, it's, a, it's very emo, it's quite goth, not necessarily in the sound of the music, in, in the feelings of it. Mm. So I think there's like, you know, um, there's a couple songs from Lemonade, obviously, mm -hmm. heartbreak album of the century. Um, and then there's other ones. I think uh, literally Fiji's emotions mm. is on there. Like there's a very emotion. And so that was my that was my go to. I have a, I have a playlist. I think there's maybe like 20 songs on there, and those really helped. And then, interestingly enough, when I got this role, when I flew to London to shoot. Um, because I was here at the time, I had to go and I had to be in isolation for 10 days because we were still doing quarantine. So I sat in a hotel room by myself for 10 days and that will really get you in the mindset. <laughs> it's a lonely world. Yeah, it's a lonely world. <laughs> Just looking there. down at London from Just my window. Waving at the raindrops. <laughs> uh, Anthro Sandman, Mason, what was it like getting the chance to portray literally the <laughs> the sexiest being in existence yeah that's nice um you know that's really nice no pressure at all um <laughs> i yeah desire is very sexy i mean desire represents all all things that desire encompasses as a construct whether that be you know need and hunger and want and sex and so it uh truly no pressure to like have to feel as if you are representative of of many people's sexual desires or sexuality to begin with but um it's it's a lot of fun it was kind of liberating it allowed myself to um to play a little bit more than i have in other parts and to kind of slink about and be a little little slutty <laughs> i mean the sexiest being in existence That's, move over gq's uh, sexiest list i, I mean, mean in existence <laughs> it's bold it's bold god <laughs> Death is an iconic character in the Sandman series, in many ways the most compassionate of the Endless family. What were some of the things that attracted you to the part? And was it fun to beat up on Dream slash Tom? I think you will do a great job, can't wait. Uh, thank you. I hope I did a great job and you won't have to wait for long because it's out on August 5th on Netflix. Um, to answer your question, some of the things that attracted me to the part, well, okay, we just said, I was a huge fan of the Sandman, um, of the comics. I read them years ago and death was a character that particularly spoke to me because I had never seen um, a death in pop culture that was so, or the idea of death that wasn't the Grim Reaper, that wasn't dark and gloomy and scary. And so to have a chance to play this role that fans like myself connected to because she is gentle, because she's caring, because she's maternal, that was a no brainer. And then the other side of that is there are so many people that will discover the Sandman through this series just because it's on Netflix and Netflix is so trusted and whatever is on Netflix, people will watch. Um, it was really interesting for me because they're gonna hear this role and they're gonna hear death and they're gonna have a very 
they're gonna have a preconceived notion of what that is, and I think that is gonna be completely upended. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from If Sandman, Mason, what was your reaction when you got the role for Desire? Um, <laughs> I was it, it just completely gobsmacked. I mean, I can't, it, you probably felt similar. Like, this is, these yeah. are eternal beings, they're endless. and. The show and the comics are so iconic. That as, yeah, especially if you're a fan. Yeah, I think both of us came in as, as fans. fans. So sand it's, fans. it's it's sand fans. Um, <laughs> we're both from San Francisco. Exactly. Uh, and so that I think even <laughs> held even more weight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You like San Francisco. I like San Francisco. 